Hello, welcome to the video lecture series on digital image processing. In our last lecture, we have talked about image restoration, uh, image registration problem. So, we have talked about different image mismatch or match measures. We have talked about the cross correlation between two images and we have also seen some application of registration techniques. Now, including this image registration technique, whatever we have done till now in our digital image processing course, you have seen that all our discussions are mainly based on black and white images. That is, we have not considered any color image during our discussion. Now, starting from today and coming few lectures, we will talk about the color image processing. So, today what we are going to do is, we are going to introduce the concept of color image processing. We are going to see that what are primary and secondary colors. We are going to talk about color characteristics. Then we will see chromaticity diagram and how the chromaticity diagram can be used to specify a color. We will see two color models. One of them is RGB color model or red, green and blue color model and other one is HSI color model. And we will also see that how we can convert from one color model to another color model. Now, first let us talk about why we want color image processing when we get information from black and white images itself. The reason is color is a very, very powerful descriptor and using the color information, we can extract the ob objects of interest from an image very easily, which is not so easy in some cases using, using black and white or simple gray level images. And the second motivation way why we go for color image processing is that or we talk about color images is that human eyes can distinguish between thousands of colors and color shades. Whereas, when we talk about only black and white image or grayscale image, we can distinguish only uh, about uh, two dozens of intensity uh, uh, distributions or different gray shades. So, that is the reason that color image uh, processing is a very, very important topic. Uh, uh, firstly, because we can distinguish between more number of colors and secondly, we can uh, identify some objects in a color image very easily, which otherwise may be difficult from a simple uh, intensity image or a gray level image. Now, coming to color image processing, there are two major areas. One of the area we call as uh, full color image processing. We say full color processing. And other area is pseudo color processing. Now, what is meant by this full color processing or pseudo color processing? When you talk about full color processing, the images which are acquired by, by full color TV camera or by a full color uh, scanner, then you find that almost all the colors that we can perceive, they are present in the images. So, that is what is meant by a full color image and when we try to such a full try to process such a full color image, what we will try to process is we will take into consideration all those colors which are present in the image. Whereas, when you talk about this pseudo color processing, the pseudo color processing is a problem where we try to assign certain colors to a range of gray levels. When we take an intensity image or simply a black and white image which has intensity levels from say 0 to 255, what I can do is, 
we can subdivide, we can divide this entire intensity range into a sub number of sub range. Say for example, I can divide 0 to say 50, this intensity level will be in one range, maybe 50 to 100 intensity levels will be in another range. And to this range, I can assign one particular color, whereas in this range, 50 to 100, I can assign another particular color. And this pseudo color image processing is mostly useful for human interpretation. So, as we said that we can hardly distinguish around two dozens of intensity of gray shades. Whereas, if we go for, uh, so in such cases, it may not be possible for us to distinguish between two uh, gray regions, which are very near to each other, where the intensity values are very near to each other. So, in such cases, if we go for this pseudo color, uh, pseudo coloring technique, that is we assign different colors to different range of intensity values, then from the same uh, intensity image or black and white image, we can extract the information much more easily. And this is uh, mainly useful as I said for human interpretation purpose. Now, what is the problem with the color image processing? The interpretation of color as the color is interpreted by the human beings, this problem is a psycho -physi uh, physiological problem and we have not yet been fully understand what is the mechanism by which we uh, really interpret a color. So, though the mechanism is not fully understood, but the physical nature of color we can represent formally, we can express it formally and our formal expression is really supported by uh, uh, some experimental results. Now, the concept of color is not very new. You know from your school level physics, from school level optics, that uh, way back in 1666, it was uh, Newton who discovered uh, the color spectrum. So, what he did is, his experimental setup was something like this. You have an optical prism and you pass white light through this optical prism. And as the white light passes through the optical prism, on the other side, when this white light comes out of it, the light does not remain white anymore. However, it is broken into a number of color components, which is known as spectrum. So, as has been shown in this particular diagram, you find that at one end of the spectrum, what we have is uh, the violet, at one end we have the violet and at the other end we have the red color. So, the color components that vary from violet to red and this was really discovered by Newton way back in 1666. Now, the thing is how do we perceive color or how do I say that an object is of a particular color. We have seen earlier that uh, we perceive an object, we see an object because light falls on the object or the object is illuminated by certain source of light the light gets reflected from the object, it reaches our eye, then only we can see the object. Similarly, we can perceive the color depending upon the nature of the light, which is reflected by the object surface. So, because we have to perceive this nature of the light, so we have to see that what is the spectrum of light, which is or the spectrum of the energy, which is really in the visible range, because it is only in the visible range that we are able to uh, perceive any color. So, if you consider the electromagnetic spectrum, so as shown here, the sp electromagnetic, the complete sp electromagnetic spectrum ranges from gamma rays to radio frequency waves. And you find that this visible spectrum, the visible light spectrum, it occupies only a very, very narrow range of frequencies in this entire electromagnetic spectrum. And here you find that uh, the wavelength of 
the uh, of the visible spectrum that roughly varies from uh, say 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer, nanometer. So, at one end it is around 400 nanometer wavelength and at the other end it is around 700 nanometer in wavelength. So, whenever a light falls on a uh, on an object and if the object reflects lights of all wavelengths in this visible spectrum in a balanced manner that is all the wavelengths are reflected in the appropriate proportion in that case that object will be uh, appearing as an white object and depending upon the wavelength predominant wavelength uh, within this visible spectrum the object will appear to be uh, a colored object and the object color will depend upon what is the wavelength of light that is uh, predominantly reflected by that uh, particular object surface. Now, coming to the attributes of light, if we have an achromatic light that means, a light which does not contain any color component, the only attribute which describes that particular light is the intensity of the light. Whereas, if it is a chromatic light in that case as we have just seen the wavelength of the chromatic light within the visible range can vary from roughly 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer. Now, there are basically three quantities which describe the quality of light. So, what are those quantities? One of the quantity is what is called radiance the second quantity is called luminance and the third quantity is called brightness So, we have these three quantities radiance, luminance and brightness which basically describe what is the quality of light. Now, what is this radiance? Radiance is the total amount of energy which comes out of a light source and as this is the total amount of energy. So, this radiance is to be measured in the form of in units of watts. Whereas, luminance it is the amount of energy that is perceived by an observer. So, you find the difference between the radiance and luminance. Radiance is the total amount of energy which comes out of a light source, whereas luminance is the amount of energy uh, which is perceived by an observer. So, as the radiance is measured in units of watts, it is luminance which is measured in units of what is called lumen. Whereas, the third quantity that is brightness, it is actually a subjective measure and it is practically not possible to measure the amount of brightness. So, though we can measure the radiance, luminance, radiance and luminance, but practically we cannot measure what is brightness. Now, again coming to our color images or color lights, uh, most of you must be aware that when we consider colors or when we talk about colors, we normally talk about three primary colors and we say that the three primary colors are red, green and blue. So, we consider the primary colors of light colored light. So, we consider the primary colors to be red, green and blue. So, we consider these three colors to be the 
primary colors and normally we represent it as R, G and B. Now, you find that from the spectrum which was discovered by Newton, there are actually 7 different colors, but out of those 7 colors, we have chosen only these 3 different colors red, green and blue to be the primary colors and we assume that by mixing these primary colors in different proportions, we can generate all other colors. Now, why do we choose these 3 colors to be the primary colors? The reason is something like this that actually there are some cone cells in our eyes which are responsible for color sensation. So, there are around 6 to 7 million cone cells, around 6 to 7 million cone cells which are really responsible for color sensation. Now, out of these 6 to 7 million cone cells, around 65 percent of the cone cells they are sensitive to red light, 33 percent of the cone cells are sensitive to they sense green lights and roughly 2 percent of the cone cells they sense blue lights. So, because of the presence of these 3 different cone cells in our eyes which sense red, green and blue these 3 color components. So, we consider red, green and blue to be our uh, primary colors and we assume that by mixing these primary colors in appropriate proportion, we are able to generate all other different colors. Now, as per this CIE standard specified 3 different wavelengths for 3 different colors. So, C i e specified red to have an wavelength of 700 nanometer, green to have an wavelength of 546.1 nanometer and blue to be an wavelength of 435.8 nanometer but the experimental result is slightly different from this. Let us see how the experimental result looks like. This one, this diagram shows the sensitivity of those 3 different cones in our eyes uh, uh, that we have just said. So, you find that the cones which are sensitive to blue light, to blue color uh, these cones actually receive wavelengths ranging from around 400 nanometer to 550 nanometer. Whereas, the cones which are sensitive to green lights, they uh, are sensi sensitive to wavelengths ranging from slightly higher than 400 nanometer to an wavelength of something around say uh, 650 nanometer. Whereas, the cones which are sensitive to red light, they are sensitive to wavelengths starting from 450 nanometer to around uh, 700 nanometer. Though the sensitivity is maximum for this type of cones, say blue cone is maximally sensitive at an wavelength of 445 nanometer as is shown in this diagram. So, as is shown in this diagram, you will find that the blue cells, the blue cones, they are most sensitive to an wavelength of 445 nanometer. The green cones are most sensitive to an wavelength of 535 nanometer, whereas the red cones are most sensitive to an wavelength of 575 nanometer. So, these experimental figures are slightly different from what was specified by CIE and uh, one point has to be kept in mind that though CIE standard specifies uh, red, green and blue to be of certain wavelength, but no single wavelength can specify any particular color. In fact, from the visible spectrum, from the visible domain of the spectrum that we have just seen, it is quite clear that when we consider two 
spectrum colors uh, two adjacent spectrum colors, there is no clear cut boundary between those two adjacent spectrum colors. Rather, one color uh, slowly or smoothly gets uh, merged into the other, other color. So, as you can see from the same diagram that whenever we have a transition from say green to yellow, you find that we do not have any clear cut boundary between green and yellow. Similarly, whenever there is a transition from say yellow to red, the boundary is not clearly defined, but we have a smooth transition from one color to another color. So, that clearly says that no single color may be called or no single wavelength may be called red, green or blue, but it is a band of wavelengths which give you color sensation, a band of wavelengths that gives you green color sens sensation, a band of wavelengths that give you red color sensation, at the same time a band of wavelengths that give you say blue color sensation. So, having specific wavelengths as standard does not mean that these fixed RGB component alone, components alone when mixed properly will generate all other colors, but rather we should have a flexibility that we should also allow the wavelengths of these three different colors to change, because as we have just seen that uh, green actually specifies a band of wavelengths, red actually specifies a band of wavelengths, similarly blue also specifies a uh, band of wavelengths. So, to generate all possible colors, we should allow the wavelengths of these colors are red, green and blue also to change. Now, when I say that these are the different primary colors that is red, green and blue, mixing of the primary colors generate the secondary colors. So, when we mix say red and blue, if we mix red and blue, you find that both red and blue they are the primary colors, red and blue will generate a color called magenta, which is a secondary color. Similarly, if we mix green and blue, this will generate a color which is called cyan and if we mix yellow uh, sorry red and green, if we mix red and green these two generate color yellow. So, as we have said that red, green and blue, we consider these three colors as primary colors. By mixing the primary colors, we generate the secondary colors. So, these three colors magenta, cyan and yellow, they will be called secondary colors of light. Now, here another uh, important concept is the pigments. As we have said that red, green and blue are the primary colors of light and if we mix these colors, we generate the secondary colors of light, which uh, for example, are magenta, cyan and yellow. When it comes to the pigments, the primary color of a pigment is defined as an wavelength, which is absorbed by the pigment and it reflects the other two wavelengths. So, the primary color of light should be the opposite of the primary color of a pigment. So, as red, green and blue, they are the primary colors of light, whereas magenta, cyan and yellow, they are the primary, they are the primary colors of a pigment. So, when it comes to pigment, we will consider this magenta, cyan and yellow, they are to be the primary colors. So, these are the primary colors for pigments. And in the same manner, this red, green and blue, which are the primary colors of light, these three will be the secondary colors for pigments.
And as we have seen that for the colors of light, the primary colors of light, if we mix red, green and blue in appropriate proportion, we generate white light. Similarly, for uh, the pigments, if we mix the cyan, magenta and yellow in appropriate proportion, we will generate the black color. So, for pigments, appropriate mixing of the primary colors will generate black, whereas for light, the appropriate mixing of the primary colors will generate white. Now, so far what we have discussed that is the primary colors of light which are red, green and blue or the primary colors of pigments which are magenta, cyan and yellow. These are the concepts of the color components we consider when we talk about the color reproduction or these are from the hardware point of view. That is uh, for a camera or for a display device, for a scanner, for a printer we talk about these primary color components. But when we perceive a color as human being and when you look at a color, we do not really think that how much of red component or how much of blue component or how much of green component uh, that particular color has. But the way we uh, try to distinguish the color is based on uh, the characteristics which are called brightness, hue and saturation. So, for us for the perception purpose, the color components will be taken as or the characteristics are brightness, hue and saturation instead of the red, green or and blue or cyan, magenta and yellow. Now, let us see that what does these three attributes mean. So, what is brightness? Brightness is nothing but a chromatic notion of intensity. As we have seen that in case of a black and white image, we talk about the intensity. Similarly, for a color image, there is a chromatic notion of intensity. It is not really intensity, which we call as bright or brightness. Similarly, hue, it represents the dominant wavelength in a mixture of colors. So, when you look at a secondary color which is a mixture of different primary colors, there will be one wavelength which is a dominant one, uh, dominant wavelength and the overall sensation of that particular secondary color will be determined by the dominant wavelength. So, this hue, this particular attribute, it indicates that what is the dominant wavelength present in a mixture of colors. Similarly, the other term saturation, you find that whenever we talk about a particular color red, there may be various shades of red. So, this saturation indicates that what is the purity, purity of that particular color or in other words, what is the amount of light which has been mixed to a mixed to that particular color to make it a diluted one. So, these are basically the three different attributes which we normally use to distinguish one color from another color. Now, coming to the spectrum colors, because the spectrum colors are not diluted, there is no white light, uh, white component added to a spectrum color. So, spectrum colors are fully saturated. Whereas, if we take any other color which is not a spectrum color, say, say for example, if we consider a color say pink, pink is nothing but a mixing of white with red. So, red plus white, this makes a pink color. So, red is a fully saturated color because it is a spectrum color and there is no white light mixed in red, but if we mix white light with red, the color generated is pink. So, pink color is not fully saturated, but red is fully saturated. So, we have these three concepts for color perception that is hue and saturation and the other one is brightness. And as we said that brightness indicates a chromatic 
uh, notion of the intensity, whereas hue and saturation they gives you the color sensation. So, we say that hue and saturation together they indicates what is the chromaticity of the light, whereas this brightness gives you some sensation of intensity. So, using this hue saturation of intensity what we are trying to do is we are uh, separating the brightness part and the chromaticity part. So, whenever we try to perceive a particular color we normally perceive it in the form of hue saturation and brightness whereas, uh, from the point of view of hardware it is the red green and blue or magenta cyan and yellow which are more appropriate to describe the color. Now, the amount of light uh, or the amount of red, green and blue lights which are required to form any particular color is called a tri stimulus. We call it tri stimulus. And obviously, because this indicates what is the amount of red light, green light and blue light which are to be mixed to form any particular color. So, this will have three components, one is x component, y component and z component. And a color is normally specified by what is called chromatic coefficients. So, we call them as chromatic coefficients. And this chromatic coefficients are obtained as the coefficient for red is given by x lowercase x is equal to capital X by capital X plus capital Y plus capital Z. So, this capital X is the amount of red light, capital Y uh, is the amount of green light and capital Z is the amount of blue light which are to be mixed to form uh, a particular color. So, the chromatic coefficient for red which is given by lower case x which is computed like this. Similarly, co chromatic coefficient for green is computed as uh, lower case y is equal to capital Y by capital X plus capital Y plus capital Z and similarly for blue it is capital Z by capital X plus capital Y plus capital Z. So, this lower case x, y, z these are called the chromatic coefficients of a particular color. So, whenever we want to specify a color we have to specify it by its chromatic coefficients. And from here you find that this sum of the chromatic coefficients that is lower case x plus lower case y plus lower case z is equal to 0 uh, is equal to 1. So, this is represented in normalized form. So, as any color can be specified by its chromatic coefficients, in the same manner there is another way in which a color can be specified that is uh, with the help of what is known as a CIE chromaticity diagram. So, a color can be specified both by its chromatic coefficients as well as it can be specified with the help of a chromaticity diagram. Thank you.